Ever since I got hired as a penetration tester, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me asking for advice and tips on how they can also become a pen tester or ethical hacker. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my four tips for becoming a pen tester or ethical hacker. I want to start off by saying that there is no perfect path to becoming a penetration tester. I don't have a college degree, but most of my teammates do. I don't have the OFCP, but for some jobs it's a requirement just to get in. Like any IT job, there's no correct path that will automatically get you there. There's only one thing that I've seen in common between all of the pen testers that I've talked to, and that is dedication. It's not easy learning all of these things, and I'm not going to pretend to know everything. I'm still learning every single day. But so are all the greatest pen testers. Good pen testers are learning and growing every single day. They're following the right people on Twitter and keeping up with the latest and greatest. They're also doing things like reading the Hacktivity on Hacker One in their free time. The other thing that I wanted to mention real quick is that within pen testing, there's actually a lot of different subcategories. Some people do just internal pen tests and external. Some people do Wi-Fi hacking. Some people do social engineering. Some people do red team attack simulations. My job focuses mainly on web application testing. In this video, I'm going to be giving general advice that should work as a starting point for any of these. So let's get started. Tip number one is to take advantage of all the free resources that are already online. Just on YouTube, we have the Cyber Mentor, we have Stoke, we have Nahamsek, we have Jay Haddix, we have Insider PhD, among others that I'm probably forgetting. Outside of YouTube, the big bug bounty programs also have free trainings on their website. A couple other great places to look are Port Swigger's online trainings and Cybrary.it. I'm probably missing a bunch, so let me know down in the comments what free resources you have used that have helped you. Tip number two is actually practicing all of the things that you've been learning in the training. Again, Port Swigger, Juice Shop, Webgoat, DVWA, Hack the Box, Vulnhub, Metasploitable 2. All of these are great places to practice what you've been learning from the trainings. Another great place to practice on is actual bug bounty programs. And the reason why I say that is because these bug bounty programs have uh, points only sections and programs and vulnerability disclosure programs that don't pay any money. And the reason why that's good is because the more advanced hackers and penetration testers aren't checking there because they want to get paid, right? So it's a great place to learn and to practice what you've been learning from the online trainings. I think that this step is really important to practice because you may find that you actually don't love pen testing. For me, I freaking love it and I think it's super exciting, but not everyone does. And so I would definitely encourage after you've been learning for a little while to practice and really get your, your feet wet and your hands dirty, practicing and making sure that you actually like doing this kind of work. This video was recorded well before COVID-19 was even a thing. Please, above all else, be safe. Until COVID-19 blows over and it is safe, please don't meet people in person. Do a video call, message over LinkedIn, whatever. Be safe. Please keep that in mind with tip number three. And the third thing I would recommend doing is finding a mentor and or doing career interviews. Now, the first thing I would do for this is go watch the Cyber Mentors video on how to find a mentor and what not to do and what to do when you're contacting them. He has some really good advice in that video. And the second part of that is doing career interviews. And the way that I found out about this um, kind of process, non-traditional process for finding a job, was through a book called Designing Your Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. I'll link down to that in the description. 
uh, just in case you want to get that. Like all self-help books, it's kind of like a, it's really about how you apply the information. Not every self-help book is really going to help you unless you're willing to put in the work for it. But in chapter eight of this book, it talks about interviewing people who already have the job that you want and asking them for advice, asking them questions how they got that job, things they wish they had or hadn't done, things like that. And if they know any other people that you can talk to about getting this job, but also not just getting the job, but seeing if you actually want this job, asking them what it's really like to be a penetration tester or a red teamer or whatever job it is that you're looking for. As part of the finding a mentor doing career interviews, I would highly recommend going to local security conferences. That's where I'm at right now. I'm at the local security conference here in Provo, Utah called Saint Con. Around this time last year, that I did a career interview with someone who was already a pen tester for a local security company. And he gave me some advice that put me on the path to where I'm at right now. If, if I hadn't taken his advice, there's no way I would have gotten the job that I have right now as a pen tester. So if you can pull it off, I'd highly recommend going to these security conferences, meeting people, getting out of your bubble and being social and learn from them from their past experience so that you can be where they're at in the next couple of years. Luckily, this security conference was fairly cheap, um, around $350 including lunches. And since I live fairly close, I didn't have to pay for hotel or flights or anything like that either. And if you're really lucky, if you're already in a semi IT or programming security kind of related position, most of the time your company will be willing to pay for you to go to these types of conferences and I really recommend doing that. The point of tip number three is to gather data on what is necessary to get the job that you want. The fourth tip is that there are some good paid trainings and certifications that you can take that will help you along your way to becoming a penetration tester. Things like Pen Tester Lab Pro, eLearn Security, obviously Offensive Security has the OSCP and other really good certifications. SANS is another one. For these ones, I would definitely double check with your employer and see if they're willing to pay for these certifications and trainings. And if you're already in an IT or security related job, your employer is much more likely to invest that time and money into paying for you to take these certifications or trainings. Some companies will have a corporate deal with Udemy or lynda.com or Pluralsight and give their employees free access to this. Another place to check is your local library. Originally, my first lynda.com license was through my local library and my taxes were paying for me to have access to this for free. I also have a bonus tip number five, and that is apply for the job even if you don't feel qualified. And let me tell you why. Applying for these jobs even when you don't feel qualified helps in a few ways. Number one, it helps you understand what these employers are actually looking for. Based on which questions they ask, you can kind of determine what the market is looking for in your area. You can also ask them directly, hey, what am I missing? What should I be working on? Where should I be focusing my studies in order to become a penetration tester? These are all questions that you can ask in the interview or afterwards. Another reason why you should be applying to these jobs, even if you don't feel qualified, is that it actually can help you learn how to tailor make a resume to the job and to the company that you're applying for. And that's a skill that you want anyway. And speaking of skills that you want anyway, interviewing skills and these soft skills are things that you need to get a job. So the more interviews that you do, the more comfortable you're gonna be in the interview. You might do 10, 20 interviews before you get a job, before you're actually qualified, but once you are qualified 
and you're comfortable doing those interviews, you're golden. That's how you get the job. So I can't guarantee that doing these five things will get you a job right away, but these things definitely did help me and I hope that they help you and I appreciate you watching until the very end and I will see you guys next time.